What's up you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to find the lengths of chords and also arc measures. Okay, and I'm also gonna teach you how they're related to one another. So just as a quick reminder, let me explain what a chord is. So a chord is just a straight line and the endpoints of that straight line touch the edges of the circle, right? So for instance, this line right here is a chord because it's a straight line and the endpoints of this straight line touch the circle there and there. Okay, so same thing, this is a chord over here also, and these are diameters, but diameters are also chords, right? Because they're just basically a special kind of chord. Because they're straight lines and the endpoints of this line touch the edges of the circle, and this chord is a little special because it specifically also runs through the center of the circle, right? That's how we know it's the diameter. Okay, so now that you know what a chord is, let's go over our first example here. And all we're gonna do in these examples is try to find the measure of this arc in red. Okay, now we have this circle right here. We're given that these two chords are congruent, right? We have our little congruent marks over here, so we know that they're the same length. And we're also given this central angle that's 75 degrees. Okay, so one thing we can see here is that this, this angle right here of 75 degrees is going to be the same angle as over here, right? We know that this is also 75 degrees. The reason we know that is because if you look at this angle right here, it opens up to this chord, okay? And if you look at this angle over here, it opens up to this chord, right? And the problem is telling us that these two chords are the exact same length. So if the chords are the exact same length, that means their central angles are going to be the exact same angle. Okay, so if we know what the central angle is, it's pretty easy to find the measure of the arc because they're the exact same, all right? So if the angle, the central angle is 75 degrees, that means the measure of this arc is also 75 degrees. Hmm. All right, here's the next example that we're gonna cover. And this time we're going to find this chord length right here that's in red, all right? Now, as you can see, it gives us a couple arc measures. So it gives us that this arc measure over here is 34 degrees, and it says that this arc measure is also 34 degrees. Okay, so if these arc measures are the same, we can conclude that the chords must also be the same, or in other words, congruent, right? So this chord is congruent to this chord. Okay, and we can conclude that because these two chords are on the same circle and have the exact same arc measures. So if this chord is five units long, then this red one is also five units long. All right, here's the next problem. So as you can see, uh, this time we're trying to solve for this arc measure in red right here. And we're given a couple angles, so 110, 60, and we're given that uh, these two lines are congruent, right? Because this side is congruent to this side, and then this double side is congruent to this double side. Okay, so that's the big takeaway, right? We know these two chords are congruent to one another. So let's look, uh, let's start with this chord right here, okay? So like we've learned, when two chords are congruent to each other, that means their arc measures are also congruent to one another. So what is the arc measure of this chord right here? Well, it would be this arc right here, right? So the measure of this arc is simply 110 plus 60, which is equal to 170 degrees, okay? Now, let's look at our other chord. So this time, let's look at this chord. What is the arc measure of this chord? Well, it would just be the arc right here in red. So the measure of this red arc would also be 170 degrees, right? And so we're given that this side from Z to Y is 60, so that would just mean from Y to X would be 110, right? But again, the total would still be the exact same as the other one, the first one that we saw, which again is 170. All right, now for this example, you can see we're given two different circles, right? and we're trying to solve for the length of this red chord over here. And we're given a couple details, right? So here it's telling us that the radius of this circle is seven, 
and it's saying that the arc measure over here is 104 degrees, okay? Now on this circle over here, it looks like the radius is also seven. It's also giving us a, an arc measure of 104 degrees. And here it's specifically saying that the cord, the length of the cord is 11, okay? So what would the length of this cord be? Well, this one would also be 11. And the reason we can conclude that is because even though these are two different circles, it tells us that the radius or the radii are the exact same, okay? So that's one thing that we need. And the other one is that we have to have the exact same arc measure, which we do, right? This is 104 and this is 104, okay? So if you have two circles and they have the same radius and the same arc measure, then you can conclude that the two chords are congruent. All right, now for these last few examples, we're gonna switch it up a little bit, but we're still gonna be solving for chord lengths and arc measures, all right? So as you can see, we have this uh, different circle over here and it gives us the diameter, right, from F to H, and we know it's a diameter because it's just a straight line that runs through the center, and we're given this chord over here. Okay, and here we wanna solve for X. Now, the main thing you wanna notice is this right angle, okay? Whenever you have a diameter and a chord and they intersect at a right angle, at a 90 degree angle, then that means that the two sides of the chord are congruent, okay? So this side is congruent to this side. Okay, so for this problem, if we're trying to figure out what x is equal to, well, that's kind of simple now, right? We can see that x must be equal to eight because again, this side, this length is congruent, it's equal to, it's the same as this length right here. All right, here we have another similar circle. And as you can see, again, we have a diameter and a chord and they intersect at a 90 degree angle, all right? So again, what does this 90 degree angle mean? It just means this side of the chord is congruent to this side of the chord, okay? Now, if we know that the two chords over here are congruent to one another, that means their arc measures are also congruent to one another, okay? so. If this arc right here is 40 degrees, that means this arc right here is also 40 degrees, all right? So we just solved for x right here. All right, here's another, and you guessed it, similar problem. So again, we're given another circle, and again, we're just gonna try and solve for x, okay? So here we're given that this line from L to N is the diameter, and this line right here is the chord, and again, they create a 90 degree angle. Okay, so that just means that this side is equal to this side. So if we want to solve for x, we can simply set this side equal to this side, right? So we can, uh, to solve for x, we could say 5x minus 6 is equal to 2x plus 9. And uh, let's just move stuff over here. So then we get 3x so on this side. And then here we can add 6 to both sides, right? Move the numbers to the right. Those cancel out. Uh, so we get 3x is equal to, let's cancel out, 9 plus 6 is 15. So we can see that x must be equal to 5. Boom. All right, now for this last problem, uh, you can see we're given another circle, similar circle. And again, we're given that this diameter and this chord create a 90 degree angle. So we know that this side is congruent to this side. So again, to solve for uh, x up here, right, this for this problem, we just wanna solve for the arc measures. Again, since we know the two chords are congruent, then we know the two arc measures right here are also congruent. So to solve for x, just like in the last problem, we can just set them equal to each other. All right, so we're gonna have, let's see, 5x plus two is equal to 7x minus 12. Uh, get all the x's on the same side, so let's move them to the right this time. Those cancel out. And let's move the numbers to the left side, so let's add 12 there and add 12 there, so here we get 14 is equal to 2x. All right, so then here we could see that x must be equal to seven. Boom. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or wanna see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.